we are making a farmer's stable today. This is old lumber my dad had. Uh, it's about a inch and a half thick and I'm gonna try to keep most of it. Uh, this is gonna be a farmer's stable so it's not gonna be the nice clean joints, you know, where there's no gap or anything. And then Yvonne had a good idea to reuse the legs on an old dining room table that we had. She thinks those will look good underneath it. Uh, if they don't turn out correct, then I can always build new legs, but we'll give those a shot first. So I am gonna plane off the surface on this because it is just rough sawn. You can see the, the blade marks from the big sawmill that cut it. So I'd like it to be smooth at least so no one gets splinters or anything. Uh, it's already been checked for nails, so I believe that we've got them all out, but uh, hopefully they are. I can't even tell you how excited I am that we are finally getting a handmade by my lovely husband Chris farmhouse table. That is something that has been on his to-do list forever, forever he has wanted to make a farmhouse table. But in our old house, our rooms just, they really wouldn't it wouldn't have looked right. It just, the rooms were not big enough. So this space, holy cow, he could have went bigger. If we could have found bigger, you know, longer wood, you just never know. But so in today's video, he is sharing the process of how he is making a farmhouse table. If you're new to this channel, my name is Yvonne. And along with my husband, Chris, we love to make over items and sometimes it is making items new. So today he is sharing with you the how to's of how he created a probably will be someday a family heirloom table. Oh, I don't think your ears all day long could handle that planer, <laughs> which was really loud. Nothing like moving in and waking the neighbors. Luckily they're not close, but whoo, look at that sawdust pile. Yep, the planer takes most of the material off, but you do have to go in and do some detailed sanding. <gasps> Look at, isn't this, can't you already see it just forming? I love the perfectly imperfect. I love the saw marks. I love the nail marks. I love the bug marks. I love it all, as long as there's no bugs still living in there. But I just love that perfectly imperfect of it. In our old house, we had two tables. One was a brand new back... 20 some years ago, an oak table that we bought from a local oak factory that ha handmade them. And now this table that he's taken apart was one that we got in a lot where we bought a whole bunch of furniture off somebody that was just going to burn it. They had bought a storage warehouse and Chris actually took the veneer off, tried to fix it, but over time the top was still warping. So he needs to take this table apart <laughs> um to be able to use those legs 
But in our move, we had already taken the table apart, so that was just some other material coming off the top of the table that he thought he might have to use. But these are the beautiful legs. So they were just sitting out in our barn, and I'm like, I don't know. I think they're beautiful. Do we need that tabletop that just keeps on a warping? Other than trying to now, what he's working on is he needs a support beam to go across because there's three legs on these the table that we took these legs off of. So there's six legs total, three on each side, but it does need a center beam for support. And it also needs a skirting, so you just don't put the planks right on top of the legs. Um, you need some forms, you need some skirting to hide the top of the legs. So he ne luckily there was enough wood that he's going to be able to cut that out of this material also. So at first he used the original blocks and the length of the legs themselves, but then realized that it was going to be a really tall table. <laughs> so it needs to go between 29 and 30, which is the average height. <laughs> With this wood being so thick, that put it kind of over what it needed to be. So we already kind of had it put together, but you know, luckily... It was a dry fit. It wasn't glued together yet. So now he's going to cut off this inch or so of wood off the top of these legs. And that should take it down to where it's a more tabletop height. That's the one thing you're like, I, you know, you think about it, but you didn't think about it until you like you see it. And my father-in-law had came over who has made a ton of farmhouse tables. And he's like, did you check? check your height he goes because I accidentally made some tables a little bit tall and he was right it would have been a little bit tall so gotta wink more with it he stopped over though we kind of play experts here on the channel and y'all believe it <laughs> um Chris has never made a farmhouse table before so this is his first time and it's his first time he's videoing it for all of you to see is that just not crazy so you know, any little tips that we can share along the way in case it's going to be your first time making a farmhouse stable with some recycled legs so you know. You know, I've always said that here on the channel, 
you have to be new. Sometimes you always, you can't always just start out being the expert expert at everything. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that are, but that is not us. So we are just plain Jane type of people. But so now he's just drilling in some nice screws for some great support um, because he needs to make now, once he gets them together, he needs to figure out his spacing for that support beam to that center legs. All right, so the legs on this look nice, but they are wobbly. So my idea is to run, get back a little bit so you can see it, a board from here to here to connect the two. It should stiffen everything up. So when he was attaching the legs, he did not use any glue yet again. So these are going to help structurally. Um, you could tell where he screwed in the screws to begin with. They, they were in, this, in left holes. So what he's doing is he's using these little supports um, that are really help tighten up that bond between the screw. Um, I mean, it's all about, it's a heavy table. I mean, that wood is super heavy, so he needs something that's going to be good and supportive, and these will help really hold the screws in place. So we know back in the day that we used the Kills paint and primer in the white that we used to get it right off the shelf at Walmart, which is no longer a thing. <laughs> a thing. So luckily we still have a little bit left, enough to blend this piece together. The I think I like the patina of the legs. I love, always have loved the distressing that we've done. So he's just going to paint this support beam white to match. So one board is not quite like the other, <laughs> actually. None of them are completely the same length, but that one was just really long. So just waited till it got that nice support to be able to flip it over. And uh, he was using the power of leverage to get this bad boy over because it's got to be 200 plus pounds. So that's what he's doing now is just making that straight edge cut. <laughs> Yeah, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 we might be able to come. <laughs> Alright, we're going to the door park now, so we'll put the door. Kitty helpers. Y'all don't know how hard this is. For me, not so much because I'm videoing, <laughs> but. <laughs> two people pushing, three people watching. See how that works? Three people pushing, one hand on it. Oh, it's always got a hand on it. There you go, so the hand on it. Oh, um, there that phone table phone. sat for about two and a half weeks until we could get some able-bodied strong ones to help us move this 200-pound table into the house. So I chose to have it brought in the house because I wanted to figure out what stain I wanted to stain it. You know, this is a hard decision. <laughs> you want to make the right one. So luckily he did have the scraps left over from what he cut. And now I'm going to play with some of the stains that I have in my cupboard. So I already know that this one's going to be too gray, but you almost need one that you can eliminate fast, which would be this one. I'm not even sure why I have that one in my cupboard. I must have needed it for something. But the other two I know that I like. I know that I like the color of them. I just need to see it on this piece of wood. Okay, now that I did my little edge testers, I really need to get it on the top of the wood to get that true color. You know, every stain is going to mix with the wood just a little bit different. So if you do have a leftover scrap piece, that's, that's the best <laughs> to be able to test it out on. You're kind of, you know, if you start staining and you don't like it on the table, it, it's not very easy to come off. You know how stain works. You put it on and then you wipe off the excess so you can really truly get the color. So uh, I just happened to be over some saw marks on this one. So I'm really rooting for this middle stain right here. I don't even know why I bothered with the gray. It was just going through the motions. It does not do anything for this piece of wood. And then also to get a true color, I let it sit for an hour, I let it dry, and I am going for, I believe it's Roanoke, Roanoke. I'm sure I'm slaughtering it, but it's pretty darn close, and I like that darkness that pops those saw marks. Oh, I love the length of this. I didn't want it wide. We're not going to buffet style this for any dinners. I. It's nice that you can custom build a table. I want. We wanted it long, we wanted it semi-skinny. Enough that, you know, plates could be on either side. Like I said, we're not going to, you know, card games, playing games, but never really going to buffet style this table. I have plenty of island space for that. But I'm going to go ahead and wipe off any of the excess sand dust that probably has, even though he wiped it down, like I said, it sat in the shop for two and a half weeks and there's a lot of dust just floating around. I've sure done a lot of projects in this house <laughs> that I normally would have done outside or in a workshop, but it's just how it is sometimes. So just for spills or, you know, sloppiness, I did put the stain in a metal bowl just to help any drips that may happen. I'm trying to get y'all in focus because <gasps> right away I knew that we had chose the right stain color. Oh my goodness, my heart was just happy.
it would have been easier to stain each individual slat of wood by itself, but that's just not how this one was done. Oh my gosh. I love the perfectly imperfect. I love the story this wood can tell. And that stain just brought that story right out. Oh, wow. And we chose to have them not tight together. I, that's the look that we were going for. Oh, my heart is so, so happy. And I love the white legs. So now I really want to keep that salvage look to this. I let this dry for 48 hours. We had some humidity going on, a lot of rain during that dry time. I wanted to make sure that it was good and dry. So now I'm going to be sealing this in with some Verithane clear wax. And then so the wax doesn't turn that chalky white that sometimes it does. I'm mixing in some of the black Jolie wax to really pop more of that story out from this wood. If you don't think that that black wax is elevating this to the next level, look at how the black wax on top of the clear wax is just bringing that wood to life. And I, I said, I wanted the story to come out, so I want that black wax to stick, stick in all those little crevices. And now that I have all my wax applied, that black on top of the clear, it's time to buff. So ready for the arm workout. And then I will let this dry overnight. And if I feel like I want to do the whole process over to really get that good, I just keep applying it after it's cured until I have that feeling of what I'm looking to feel. I just want it to be nice and smooth to the touch, just like a polyacrylic any other type of top coat, you're going for that protection. And yes, you can layer wax on top of each other. I've never had any problem with that. Thank you for watching today's video and I absolutely love my table. Love it, love it, love it. Had to find some more chairs, but I'll share that on that, that part, that journey on the other channel. Love the stain. I know he's like top coat. Do you polyacrylic? Do you wax? I'm a fan of the wax. I like to put a couple coats of the wax on. I love the way that it seals it. Um, just a personal preference. You just need something to protect it. I love all the imperfections from the saw marks to the bug, <laughs> the bugs that someday had ate on it. I love everything about this table. So give me a quick comment down below. Has he inspired you to create your own table, finding some salvage wood, even taking another table apart. Cause you know, in the furniture flipping business, tables in my area are one thing like people almost have to give away to take nowadays. And that's the story of our other chairs is that my sister-in-law, when we moved, she needed a smaller table, wanted a smaller table and she wanted a small round table. And so I had the perfect table for her. And of course, 
the tears kind of match that vibe of that white. So as I knew, I knew at auctions, they almost give tape. Tables and chairs, I seriously are giving away at auctions, five bucks, 10 bucks, no, yeah. Just please, sometimes they even offer for you to, <laughs> they offer, hey, if we give you a dollar, will you take the tape? I, I don't know, I don't know the story of why, what, or if people are all going for the farmhouse tables, I don't know. I'm just super excited to have this piece of handmade by the man that I love. I hope that someday our kids will appreciate it. Maybe one of them will want it down the road. I don't know if that ever comes to that. But yes, there's just something about a handmade piece, a handmade creation. And it all vibes with all the wood that we've got going on here. So thanks for watching, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to hit that subscription button. Check out our other channel, The Journey. It's down in the description below. I'll share with you the process of doing chairs, <laughs> finding chairs, doing chairs. So thanks again for watching. We will see you next time and you can see what we're up to. Bye.